Hades is the god of the dead and the underworld in Greek mythology, and his name means invisible. Hades was the only god who did not live on Mount Olympus. Perhaps he is the most feared of the gods, described as ruthless and terrifying by both Homer and Hesiod. Hades is often depicted holding a two-pronged spear called a bident and accompanied by Cerberus, the three-headed guard dog of the underworld. In Roman mythology, Hades was identified with the Etruscan god Ida and the Roman gods Dispater and Orcus. These gods were later merged under the name Pluto. Pluto, also known as the god of wealth, is another name for Hades. The name Pluto means the wealthy one and refers to Hades as the god of the valuable minerals and riches found underground. In this video, we will explore the historical origins of Hades, the god of the dead and the underworld in Greek mythology, and the development of the myths associated with him. Now, let's take a look at this myth. Who is Hades? Hades was born as the son of the titans Cronus and Rhea. Along with his brothers Zeus and Poseidon, he overthrew their father Cronus and divided the universe among themselves. Zeus took the sky, Poseidon took the seas, and Hades took the underworld. One of Hades' most distinctive features is his helmet, which makes him invisible, and his two-pronged staff called a bident. This staff represents death with one prong and life with the other. The underworld ruled by Hades is divided into three regions, Asphodel, Tartarus, and Elysium. When people die, if they have lived a good life, they go to Elysium. If they have lived neither a good nor bad life, they go to Asphodel. And if they have committed evil deeds, they go to Tartarus. The entrance to the underworld is guarded by Cerberus, the three-headed dog, who prevents souls from leaving the underworld and mortals from entering it. The realm of Hades has five rivers, each with symbolic meanings. Acheron, River of Sorrow. Acheron represents the initial stage of the journey into the realm of the dead. This river symbolizes the sorrow and grief-filled journey of the dead. Cocytus, River of Lamentation. Cocytus is regarded as a river filled with lamentation and regret in the world of the dead. Here, souls experience remorse for their mistakes and shortcomings in life. Phlegathon, River of Fire. Phlegathon is associated with fire and represents the hot and dangerous regions of the underworld. This river is linked to punishment and judgment. Letha, River of Forgetfulness. Lethe signifies forgetfulness and the erasure of memory in the world of the dead. Souls drink from this river to forget their past lives. Styx, River of Hatred. Styx forms the boundary between the upper and lower regions of the underworld. Even the gods swear oaths by the Styx. Additionally, Thetis dipped Achilles into the Styx to make him invincible. According to Greek mythology, when souls die, the god Hermes escorts them to the river Styx, where the aged ferryman Charon carries them to the gates of Hades. At this point, the three-headed wild dog Cerberus guards the entrance to keep the souls inside. Elderly family members would place a coin, traditionally a low-value obelisk for Greeks, in the mouth of the deceased as payment to Charon. Those who were not buried or unable to pay the ferryman were condemned to wander the earth as ghosts. This belief points to the ambiguous nature of Hades. It was not necessarily a place of torture and torment, but often considered as the final resting place of the soul. Hades' most significant epithet is being the god of death. He is the owner of the underworld's riches. The valuable metals that come from the earth made him the god of abundance, plenty, and wealth. He could make anyone rich or poor as he pleased. Though ruthless and fearsome, he was unyielding and unlike many gods, not capricious. Like Zeus, Hades also sent dreams to humans. Dreams would emerge from two gates of the underworld. Those coming from the Horn Gate were good and pleasant dreams, while those from the Ivory Gate were bad dreams. 
living beings could also pass into Hades' underworld. Among the heroes who descended to Hades and returned are Odysseus, Orpheus, Theseus, Heracles, and Eurydice. Hades' wife is Persephone, and his most well-known mythological story revolves around Hades' abduction of Persephone. Persephone's Abduction Persephone is the daughter of Zeus and Demeter, the goddess of agriculture and fertility. One day, while Persephone was gathering flowers, she was seen by Hades who fell in love with her. Hades then abducted Persephone and made her his wife in the underworld. Following this event, Demeter searched for her daughter and, in her grief, caused the earth to lose its fertility. This resulted in the beginning of the winter season. Upon seeing people suffering from starvation, Zeus intervened and made a deal with Hades. According to the agreement, Persephone would spend part of the year in the underworld with Hades and the other part on Earth with her mother Demeter. When Persephone is in the underworld, it symbolizes winter, and when she is on Earth, it symbolizes spring and summer. Hades and Persephone are known as ruthless and terrifying gods who cannot be appeased by any plea, offering, or sacrifice. Hades' most significant epithet is being the god of death. Hades and Persephone's Children Despite the existence of various mythological versions and stories about Hades' children, the most commonly known ones are as follows. Zagreus Zagreus is the son of Hades and Persephone and holds significant importance in Orphic mythology. According to Orphic mythology, Zagreus is known as the second Dionysus and represents a fusion of Zeus and Hades. In more widely known Greek mythology, Zagreus is considered the highest of the Chthonic gods and has a close relationship with Gaia. Orphic myths tell that Zagreus Dionysus was dismembered by the Titans and then resurrected. Makaria. Makaria is Hades' daughter, and her name means blessed, reflecting her unique nature. As Hades' daughter, Makaria's mother is a subject of debate. In some versions, her mother is Persephone, while in others, she is known as the daughter of Eurynome, Euphrosyne. Makaria has a close relationship with her father and the god of death, Thanatos, and she governs the souls of those who die peacefully or in a sacred manner. Those who die bravely in battle or childbirth are given special status under her supervision, whereas those who do not receive a sacred death may face fear or a curse. These figures highlight the diverse and rich mythology surrounding Hades and his offspring, showcasing the varied roles and attributes associated with his lineage in ancient Greek lore. Hades in Greek Mythology Orpheus Orpheus, overwhelmed by the pain of losing his wife Eurydice, decides to descend into the underworld. He is a renowned musician and singer whose music is so enchanting that even nature accompanies his melodies. Upon reaching the underworld, his music softens the hearts of Hades and Persephone, influencing them. Hades hears Orpheus's plea and offers to return Eurydice to him, but with one condition. Orpheus must not look back while rescuing Eurydice. Filled with joy and hope, Orpheus emerges from the underworld with his wife. However, since there is no light to guide them on their path, Orpheus cannot resist and looks back in the final moments. This violation of the rule causes Eurydice to vanish forever, leaving Orpheus in immense sorrow. Theseus and Pirit House Two Athenians, Theseus and Pyrrhus, believed that being sons of gods entitled them to divine spouses. They made a pact to help each other kidnap Zeus's daughters. Theseus chose Helen, and Pyrrhus pledged to marry Persephone, Hades' wife. Theseus and Helen, Theseus, the hero of Athens, sets out with his friend Pyrrhus to abduct Helen. Helen is the daughter of King Tyndareus of Sparta, born from Zeus disguised as a swan and queen Leda. She is famous for her beauty and is known in Greek mythology as the woman whose abduction sparked the Trojan War. Theseus wants to marry her, but must wait for her to reach marriageable age. During this time, he leaves Helen with her mother, Aethra. The abduction of Helen 
leads to Castor and Pollux invading Athens to retaliate and taking Aethra captive, returning her and her sisters to Sparta. Pyrrhithaus and Persephone Pyrrhithaus, the king of the Lapiths, is a close friend of Theseus. He falls in love with Persephone and decides to abduct her. The two descend into the underworld and visit Hades' realm. However, Hades is aware of their plan and traps them. Hades appears hospitable and sets up a feast, but as soon as they sit down, serpents entwine around their feet and keep them trapped there. While Theseus is eventually rescued by Heracles, Pyrrhithaus remains in the underworld forever. Punishment of Pyrrhithaus Pyrrhithaus is seated on a stone known as the Chair of Forgetfulness. This chair is an instrument of punishment where the seated person must remain in forgetfulness for eternity. Pyrrhithaus receives this punishment for daring to abduct Persephone. He sits there forever, unable to remember anything. Sisyphus Sisyphus is the son of Aeolus and Enerete, husband of Merope, and the founder king of Ephora, Corinth, in ancient Greek mythology. Sisyphus betrays Zeus by revealing to the river god Aesopus that his daughter Aegina was abducted by Zeus. This betrayal angers Zeus, who sends the death spirit Thanatos to Sisyphus. However, Sisyphus manages to chain Thanatos, and Zeus must intervene to free him. Sisyphus does not want to accept his fate in the underworld. Before dying, he asks his wife not to perform funeral rites for him. Displeased by the lack of ceremony, Hades allows Sisyphus to return to the mortal world to punish his wife for not burying him properly, with the understanding that he would return afterward. However, Sisyphus never returns as promised and lives for years on earth. Finally, upon his true death, Sisyphus is punished. Hades condemns Sisyphus to roll a stone uphill in the underworld, only for it to roll back down each time he reaches the top in an eternal punishment. Lovers of Hades Luce Luce was the most beautiful of the nymphs and a daughter of the Titan Oceanus. Hades fell in love with her and abducted her to the underworld. She lived the rest of her life there. Upon her death, the god transformed her into a white poplar tree and placed her in the Elysian fields. Hero Heracles crowned himself with a branch from this tree to celebrate his return from the underworld. Minthi Minthi was a nymph of the Cocytus River and a mistress of Hades. A jealous Persephone trampled her underfoot, turning her into the garden mint plant. According to some versions, after Hades tore Minthi apart, he transformed her into mint. Another version suggests that Hades kept Minthi as his mistress before marrying Persephone, then discarded her. Minthi boasted of being loved by Hades more than Persephone and took pride in it. Demeter, angered by Minthi's arrogance towards her daughter, trampled her underfoot and turned her into mint. Theophil Theophil was a girl who claimed that Hades loved her and that she was better than Persephone. Hades Titles among the other names commonly known for Hades or Pluto are Aids or Adenius, meaning invisible, emphasizing Hades' dark and mysterious aspects. Polydegmon, meaning Lord of the Rich, signifying Hades' association with abundance and wealth. Chthonios, meaning underworld, symbolizing Hades' connection to the underworld. Eubulius, meaning good counselor, another name used for Hades. Theos Katakthonios, meaning God of the Underworld, signifying Hades as the ruler of the Underworld. Chthonios Zeus, another name for Hades, often emphasizing his role as the master of the Underworld. Odysseus, used as Hades' name in Latium, expressing benevolence. Agilastus, a god with a melancholic aspect. Agesilaus, known for his ability to draw all people into his empire. Agetes or Hegetes, described as the one who governs by Pindar. Idoneos. This name likely originated from a king among the Molossians who was confused with Hades in trying to abduct his daughter Persephone. Axiosursus, or Clipped God, used in Kabiri Mysteries as the name of Pluto. Yao, mentioned in Clares, a town in Ionia. Moira Getes, referred to as the Guide of Destinies. Ophius. 
known among the Messenians as the Blind God. These titles reflect different facets, powers, and attributes associated with Hades. Hades's rare depiction in Greek mythology primarily stems from his role as the god of death and the underworld. Death and the afterlife were highly feared subjects for the Greeks, and because Hades was associated with this fear, he was generally perceived as a dreaded figure. Therefore, he was not often portrayed prominently in art and mythology, or, if depicted, his recognizable features were not distinctly emphasized. However, some figures found on archaic period pottery are believed to represent Hades. These figures are often depicted as a man with a dark-colored beard, portrayed magnificently. These portrayals show Hades typically seated on an ebony throne, surrounded by a dark atmosphere. In later periods, especially in works like The Rape of Persephone, depictions of Hades can be observed. In these works, Hades is often portrayed as youthful, but he can also be depicted in different ages. However, these portrayals still present Hades as a menacing and authoritative figure. Overall, the scarcity of depictions of Hades in Greek art allowed for various interpretations and representations without strict rules. However, it is generally accepted that Hades is portrayed as dark, majestic, and authoritative.